Welcome to this tutorial where I'll show you how to set up the Nikon D500 for bracketed HDR shooting. When I speak about HDR shooting, then I'm not, uh, when I'm not uh, speaking about the inbuilt functionality of creating HDR photos, as um, this functionality is not a, not a real HDR workflow, which is used in professional, um, professional um, photography. So we will um, create uh, different shoots um, with different exposures for creating an, a real HDR on our PC later. So um, the first thing we do, of course, who would have thought this, is to turn on this camera and to make sure that we are using the A mode. Um, why are we using the A mode? Because we want the camera, we, we want to have full control about everything related to aperture. While well, the camera is, uh, the camera will um, calculate the timings and uh, how long the, ex uh, the the exposure is. So this is, should be done by the camera, while we should control or or like to control uh, the aperture settings. So mode A. This is the first thing we have to do. Um, after, after having, having checked we have the A mode on, we go to the menu now and the first thing we do is that we on the left side of the menu go to the photo shooting menu. And here the, the top point is a photo shooting menu bank and uh, this is some kind of customer setting. Um, you might remember when you've uh, used older Nikon cameras that we had user settings U1 and U2. Um, uh, these are no longer there, but we have the possibility to have uh, user settings in the camera built in now. So um, I guess that most of you um, have already configured the camera to their needs when shooting normal photo and not HDR. So um, uh, if I show you now which settings to change and which settings to apply, then it would be uh, would be bad if we do this in your um, in your productive environment, in your user settings, which you are using for the normal photos. So we will create a separate uh, user setting, especially for HDR. So first we click on this photo shooting menu bank. And here you see that we have four slots for these settings. You see that I have a standard setting, for example, when shooting normal photo, I have an HDR scenario, I have a test scenario, and um, HDR, okay, it is already configured in my camera, but I want you, but I want to show you how to configure it in your camera. So I'll use the slot D, and I'll go with a right click to rename it, and I'll name it Tutorial. Within this setting, we can now change everything without corrupting our standard our standard environment for shooting normal photos. So we'll make this uh, photo shooting menu bank deactive now, and I click on it. So um, now we can change everything in this menu is related to the menu bank which is selected. One thing I like is to have a different folder for HDR shoots, for bracketed shoots, uh, than normal photos. So the storage folder will be renamed here to um, HDR um, 5D, for example. It's You can use something else. You can skip this completely. Um, it's just my favorite, my favorite thing to have a separate folder for it. Also, I'm going to change the file naming of HDR photos to HDR so I can see them with a glance that this is a bracketed photo uh, used for HDR, not, not, a, not, not, a, normal, um, not a normal photo. So um, we'll go down here and um, image quality um, should be set to raw, of course, so we have full control over, over that later. The image size according to that should be at L, large, with JPEG and TIFF, although that we don't use it here. And it should be uh, RAW L, large for uh, RAW recordings as well. We have some special um, preferences for RAW recordings here. And um, I'm always using lossless compressed. It is saving space on the memory, um, but it is not... It is not um, it is not impacting the, the image quality as the um, compression is lossless. So I'm using that 
and uh, make sure you use 14 bit uh, bit depth here. So now we go to the ISO sensitivity settings. ISO sensitivity settings is exactly what is here in this, uh, what is already here on the screen. Um, I use a standard sensitivity of 100 as ISO value and uh, I can change it when photographing and when acknowledging that the surroundings are too dark when I'll, when I'll go it a step higher. Um, really important switch auto ISO off because uh, it would be fatal if we use uh, multiple bracketed shots and within that series of shots the camera's auto mechanism would say that it would change the ISO. So that would be bad, so I'll switch it off here. Yes, uh, white balance is something which I always set to cloudy. It doesn't matter, to be honest, because later when we are exporting our image on the, on the PC or on the Mac, um, then we can always, always change this. I use cloudy because in most scenarios it's best to have a control of the token image on the camera display. Um, with that white balance uh, it, is, it is good to have cloudy and it would be fatal here as well to, to use auto because the camera might change um, the, uh, this value during a bracketed shoot and this is something we would, uh, we would see later and which would impact our, our photos. So we go down in this menu and we switch active delightening off. Um, we, sw uh, we switch this um, long exposure um, thing off. We don't use vignette control, we turn it off because we can do this later in, on, in, in, in Lightroom or Photomatics or, or something you like. Um, as well as auto distortion control flicker reduction, set it to off. One very important thing is auto bracketing set because that is exactly what we need later. So I'll set this to AE only. Don't use AE and flash, don't use flash, we just use AE here. This is perfect. So um, this was everything we could change and we had to change on the photo shooting menu. Uh, make sure you have these, um, these uh, settings active. So we go left in the menu and now we go to the um, to the sorry to the custom setting menu, and as we did before on the photo shooting menu, um, here we have custom settings banks as well. Um, it's the same thing, this time for custom settings, not for photo shooted settings or photo shooting related settings. You see here, I have a standard one. I have one for HDR shoots. Um, this is what we will do now in the D slot so that you can see it as well exactly as in the photo shooting menu. Um, I'll rename it. I'll rename it to tutorial as well. And make sure that we make this custom settings bank active. It's active now. Perfect. Here we go to the C menu for timers and AE lock and we go to the self timer menu and here we have three values we can enter. It's the self timer delay which is when you use the, when you, when you actually take a photo, sorry, um, when you actually take a photo how long it will take for the self timer to, to take the first, to take the first uh, photo shoot. So we set this to two seconds, this should be enough in, in in most scenarios, the number of shots should be five here because we will later take a bracketed shoot with five shoots. Um, so and the interval between the shots is 0 0.5 seconds. You don't have to use longer ones. Um, some people might say use a longer one because every time a, a photo is triggered um, there is movement in the camera because of a mirror or something else but I think 0 0.5 seconds is, is quite good. So um, this was everything we have to do here in the in the individual menu, and um, so always when we are using our when we are shooting HDR, go and make sure that you have um, here on the photo shooting menu the active bank uh, for your HDR preferences. And here on the custom settings menu as well, custom settings bank for HDR. 
Um, a tip from my side is to um, you have something called my menu where you, where you can enter or where you can uh, put special uh, menu links. So in my menu, I the first two points are the photo shooting menu bank and the custom settings bank. So I have quick access to them and don't have to navigate through the whole menu on the left. So um, after we have done this, this is everything we have to do in the menu. So I click on menu and now we are ready for shooting photos. One thing is there we have to do now. Um, you have here this, uh, this button for bracketed shooting and uh, we hold it down and um, and with the um, with the um, wheel over here we can turn this up so now we have three different shoots in our bracket series um, now we have five different shoots in our bracket series and the 1.0 says that it's always hold steps so we are doing uh, five hold steps bracketed um, and uh, now we are ready to shoot. Make sure you have uh, um, this, this, this dial wheel here set to self-timer. So now we place the camera somewhere on the pot, for example, and uh, we say, uh, of course, make sure that you have autofocus turned off. After you have focused your, after you have focused your, um, your, your target, and uh, now we can shoot. It takes two seconds, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth with a long exposure. And so we can control what the camera has done here. Very light, a little bit darker, 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 darker. Uh, uh, sorry, normal. And these are our five bracketed shoots which we can later combine on the PC or Mac to an HDR photo. So um, um, after we we are finished with our HDR just make sure you go back in the menu to your photo shooting menu bank which is the standard for normal photography into the custom settings bank which is normal for um, for normal photography so that you are already ready for shooting normal photos and um, now you would have to switch off this five-step bracketed shooting series just by once again holding down this bracketed and uh, go back to 0F. So now you are ready after we've switched to normal, to normal operation to shoot one single normal photo again. I hope I could help you have fun shooting HDR.